Yeah. John, where are you coming to us from? I'm coming from Glorious Bath, England. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love uh, it. And John, you were the composer for this film. Well, I was one of them. I was probably the one last one. <laughs> Right? It, it is so good to see your face. You know, we've never had the opportunity to meet. Do you get asked a lot to, to play um, pieces from this score? Um, well, I went down to uh, Santa Ana uh, in February and they, at the Frida Cinema, you know, down there that uh, they organize, everyone dresses up and they have a screening and I went down there. They had a string octet playing the, playing the theme. We, I remixed the score about two years ago. Ha ha ha, here it is. Um, wow. And did some amazing art, artwork. So the answer is yes, I suppose. It never, it's still around. Thank you so much, John. You know, 31 years ago, in the summer of 1989, a small band of wildly creative people came together from all around the globe to create the movie that we're celebrating today on May 23rd which is World Turtle Day. And since we know that you guys are diehard turtle fans, we're supporting the efforts of the American Tortoise Rescue. And if you click below, you're gonna find out how you can support the ongoing efforts of this nonprofit organization. Bringing the turtles to life was no small feat. And each turtle required four different collaborators. The puppeteer, the stuntman, the voice actor, and the guy in the suit. And today we are celebrating the unsung heroes, the guys who endured the intense physical challenges of literally bringing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to life. And if you guys, if you stick around to the end, you're gonna find out that we have got more things up ahead with the other turtle collaborators. So stay tuned. Now, I wanna give it up to my friend and one of the original producers, Kim Dawson. Thank you, Judith. What a blessing to be here. I'm back in Cocoa Beach, uh, where my partner, Gary Cropper, who was the guy who turned me on to the comic originally, uh, lived and died in, uh, about a year ago. But he would be beyond stoked that we're doing this and that this reunion is happening with, with all of you. I can only say uh, this thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you guys, as, especially Steve and, and Brian, whose vision this was, is, and will always be. And without you guys, it would, it would not have anywhere near the heart and soul that it does, but I think that's why it lives on. So many, many thanks, and let's have fun. It's gonna be a ball. Here's Bobby Herbeck, who wrote that script. I just wanna say real quick, um, if it wasn't for Peter and Kevin, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman, none of us would be here doing this. It was their genius, they're, they're amazing. And I want to hand it off to my former roomie in England, the lovely Steve Barron. Thank you, thank you so so much, Bobby. And yeah, Peter, Peter and Kevin. Obviously, they're not here, but uh, without them, we would not be here for sure. Um, they came up with a great idea, and uh, then you know, we, obviously, we needed a lot of luck on the way to get into production, which was such a a battle, but uh, such a great experience. And then. I think with every every production that I've worked on, certainly when you're putting together the pieces, uh, you carefully obviously pick who's going to come on on the ride with you, where you, where it's your choice, and um, you you uh, you know you, you hope you get that right, and occasionally you, you totally get it right, and I really feel that we got a we got a starting you know with it, with the turtles and 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 the team at Henson's and Jim Jim Henson, Brian's father, and you know, agreeing to go ahead and do this and Brian coming in to drive it um and run the you know the, the mastery of it and taking on so many things that hadn't been done before. It was um it it was an an amazing experience. And you know I'm just gonna introduce of course the uh the family at the heart of it, which are the the four teenage ninja turtles which are uh, Donatello, Leaf Tilden, Leaf there. Hi. Yeah. Right here, and, up here. Here, over there. Hi, uh, and Mickey, my, Michelangelo. How am I, Bunga? Hey, man. And David Foreman, Leonardo. Hello, the only UK turtle. <laughs> 
and Josh Pace, the New York turtle. What's up? At the heart of it. From Venice, California today, but <laughs> yeah. the New York turtle. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that was, uh, that was, as I say, it's just uh, getting the, getting those things right, getting you guys who uh, together and, and having you fight for it. And it was really tough for you guys in particular. I think that is, uh, it was, we owe so much to, uh, to how you battled through the heat and the, the, uh, the pace we had to work out and the difficult things we had to do. But um, I'm, I'm really proud of it and I hope you all are too. You should be. That was a beautiful intro and, and the guys, I could, I second you on that one because these guys are, in my opinion, they're the unsung heroes. And so we get to sing their praises today. Uh, there's another uh, person in the room who, without him and without the Creature Shop and his dad, Jim Henson, uh, we would not be here today. And uh, I want to invite into the room and say hello to Brian Henson. Hi. Uh, Brian, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. What an incredible and crazy experience making this movie was. And you said my vision, it was totally Steve's vision. I was there tr just trying to help make what, what Steve wanted to make, which was so incredible. And, and it was so wildly overambitious, <laughs> what we were trying to do. I remember when, right away, like very soon after Steve and I first started meeting and, and thought, well, what do we need to do to test this? And we drew, <laughs> I drew up a little diagram of a turtle doing was it a handspring and then a forward flip and then cleanly going down into a manhole and we said if we can get that then we're then we might be doing all right and i think dave i made you do it didn't didn't you have to do that at the creature uh, you shop made, you made me do a lot of flips brian <laughs> <laughs> but dave did it we whipped together a turtle suit and and sure enough, Dave, did, I think a handspring and then a forward flip and then a dive through a manhole without touching the edges of that of the manhole. We thought, wow, this is this is crazy. But it was um, it was an incredibly fast build because uh, I mean it was financially this was not an expensive movie and at, at ev everything had to be done fast and as and as and, and as inexpensively as possible, which mostly meant fast. And I think we built the turtles in 10 weeks. Is that right, Steve? I think we built them in 10 weeks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. And then I remember when we got to North Carolina with the British crew, that was the only film where we said to the Creature Shop crew, you're all on a 70 hour week. Everybody was, that whole crew was on a 70 hour week and often they had to put in for overtime beyond that <laughs> it, was, it was really it was the hardest working it was the hardest i think i've ever worked and a lot of those creature shop guys but boy it was it was it was fun and crazy and terrifying and delightful all at the same time and the, you know and the other people is the the pairings of our ninja turtles were their puppeteers who were also working their faces and that's dave greenaway david rudman uh, Marty Robinson, um, Matt Wilson, and, and each of those, so each of you guys had your puppeteer um, pairing that had to keep your faces alive and keep you talking all the time. And, and I stay in touch with all of those guys too. But uh, Splinter was really an extraordinary character with such emotional depth that's very, very hard to accomplish through a puppet. And, and I think what, what Kevin did with Splinter was really, truly extraordinary. It's such a subtle performance. Uh, it's a minimalist performance, which is almost impossible for a puppeteer to do because puppeteers always go too far. And uh, anyway, it was an extraordinary performance and, and welcome Kevin Clash. And it's good to see you out. I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, to Rob Tigner who did the eyes of Splinter, and also Ricky Boyd, who I had I dra dragged him around with me during the arms of, <laughs> of Splinter. <laughs> um, it, it was, it, wow, 80 pounds. 
that, that that I was I was carrying around with that puppet. Wow. Ah, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, not it's nothing. It was nothing then, but it would kill me now. <laughs> No, nah, but it was a lot of fun. I, what I was what I was excited about is is I got to I got to perform something that was a really serious kind of character. Now, come on, serious being you know a four foot rat that's seventy five <laughs> years old, but it was fun because trying to common uh, c uh, combine people that I've seen on television, like uh, James Olmos, is is one is a character that I you know coming from Miami Vice that I put, and then uh, Pat Morita, who and I try to combine those two. You know, with Pat Morita's sense of humor, and I tried to combine those two actors and characters together to make uh, this uh, four foot, 75 year old rat. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do something serious, you know, instead of, you know, puppets bumping around and jumping around. I am thrilled to introduce the turtle's arch enemy, our super villain, the evil shredder, James Sato. Hey, hey. hey. Everybody, great to be here. It's a lot of fun. Thank you, James. Now, I know you're a man of few words, but I think I speak for everyone when I say you were perfection in this role. Where would I have been without my boss, Charles Pennington? Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jay Patterson, the incredible Jay Patterson in the house. <laughs> Jay! Hey, everybody. How are you? Where are you today? I'm, I'm in New York. I'm in the Inwood section of New York. That's the northern end of Manhattan. Awesome. We're so happy that you're here today. So we have another very important musical contributor, and that is our very own Partners in Crime, Richard Usher. Hello, my friend. In the house. In the house. How are you? In How's everybody house. doing? And I'm putting you on the spot, Richard. Richard is a first responder. And uh, we are supporting the First Responders Children's Foundation. Um, and they were created to help children who have lost a parent in the line of duty. And they also help families who are experiencing financial hardship due to tragic circumstances. So Richard, can you tell us a little bit, like what, what has this experience been like for you? Um, uh, it's been tough, you know, we are in New York. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, so I'm a first responder, the chaplains, the uh, chaplains, and uh, uh, we work with emergency services. I work with people who have been incarcerated, formerly incarcerated, but doing a lot of work locally uh, with the homeless people. Uh, right now is an especially tough time for people who don't have jobs, who don't have housing, who don't have health insurance. Uh, so I go out, I talk, I meet the homeless people, see what they're up to, I provide meals for people, I've broken up fights, um, a number of things. But it's tough here, but we are enduring. Uh, I'm a man of God as a chaplain. I believe uh, in the Almighty and that he's been keeping us all and preserving us through this tough time. And it's been tough for the people that have lost loved ones. We pray for them. And for those that have been sick, we're praying for their healing as well. Yeah. Wow, Richard. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we just so appreciate that you're out there on the front lines. Hey, and I want to say hi to Steve. We never actually met. Um, I did work with your mother, Steve. I worked with Zelda once on a film, but I never actually met you. This is the first time, so it's, it takes a, an international uh, academic to bring us together, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good to meet you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I, I hear it from, from the fans that, uh, that, Steve, you should organize all these people back together to make Turtle 7 or 9 or whatever it is now. <laughs> Because they want the original back. <laughs> they want a reboot. Let's do it. They want a reboot. Let's a do lot of them. them. We'll do that on another Zoom call, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does Steve have any um, notes that he wants that he would like? <laughs> <laughs> held on to them for all of these <laughs> years. It was, you know, like that final directorial edge. <laughs> Don't, don't you listen the first time round, Josh? I mean, we've done it. <laughs> um, no, um, notes are, not, you know, just, this, is, this is a real story. These turtles are real. They're not, uh, they're not a cartoon. They're not a comedy. They exist. Let's do it. Wow, thank you, Steve, for once again being our fearless leader and for setting the tone. Okay, guys. Grab a slice of pizza, get comfortable, because here we go. 
scene one through seven, Interior Channel 3 Studios evening. Cuts of crime on New York City streets as April O'Neill does her evening newscast in the studio. Much more than just a series of small, isolated incidents, it's now apparent an organized criminal element is at work. And at the moment, business is good. So good, in fact, there appear to be no eyewitnesses to any of these crimes. Only a few vague reports of young boys or teenagers at the scenes have been filed. But whoever is behind these crimes, one thing is certain. These are more than just a series of random, isolated incidents. Crimes without criminals? An invisible gang at work? Who are we going to call? Unfortunately, the police are the only ones available to combat what some are dubbing the silent crime world. But perhaps the most disturbing silence is that coming from City Hall. April O'Neill, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Scene 11, interior sewer night. A dark sewer as Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo and Raphael emerge from the shadows. Oh, spectacular. We were awesome, bros. What's up? Yes, dudes and dudettes, Major League Butt Kicking is back in town. Oh, yeah. What's up? Righteous. Bossa Nova. Eh? Bossa Nova? Uh, Chevy Nova? Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, come on, let's move it. I'm starving. Oh, baby. Major pizza attack here, dude. Pizza, I need it. Oh, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> Give me free. You got it. We were great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As the turtles arrive back in the den, they get a lesson from Splinter. We have had our first battle, Master Splinter. There were many, but we kicked. We fought well. Were you seen? In this, you must never lapse. Even those who would be our allies would not understand. Our domain is the shadow. Stray from it reluctantly. But when you do, you must strike hard and fade away without a trace. I lost a sigh. Then it is gone. But I can get it back. I can Raphael, get it back. Let it go. Your ninja skills are reaching their peak. Only one truly important lesson remains, but must wait. I know it is hard for you here on the ground. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I want a large, thick crust, double cheese, ham, pepperoni. Your teenage minds are broad, eager, but you must never stop practicing the art of ninja. The art of invisibility. Oh, and, and, and but no anchovies. And I mean no anchovies. You put anchovies on this thing and you're in big trouble, okay? Michelangelo! Uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, that, that'll do. And the clock's ticking, dude. <laughs> you are still young, but one day I will be gone. Use my teachings wisely. I suggest we all meditate now on the events of this evening. Nice night. Mm-hmm. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. Uh, hey, Mikey. Did you ever think about what Splinter said tonight? I mean, like what it would be like, you know, without him? Hmm. Time's up. Three bucks off. <sighs> Okay, okay, 122 and an eight. 122 and an eight. Terrific. Where the heck is 122 and an eight? You're standing on it, dude. Just slip it down here. Give me that. Hey, this is a 10. The tab's 13. You were two minutes late, dude. Oh, come on, I couldn't find a place. Wise man say, Forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. I gotta get a new roof. 
Yes, friends, the new Turbo Ginsu. Woohoo! It dices, it slices, and yet makes French fries in three different. Um, Elias could not join us today, but we have Zane Pice joining us to read the role of Casey. And we kept it all in the family because Zane is Josh Pice's son. So I want to invite Zane to the room. Zane! I'm really happy to be here. I You're brave. I watched it so many times in my childhood and uh, again last night. Totally holds up. Zane reminded me last night that uh, we would watch the movie. Maybe I forced him to watch it and then I would like, <laughs> quiz him on like which color is, you know, which turtle. All right, Zane, let's take this out for a spin. Exterior Central Park night. Two hoodlums steal an old lady's purse. Raphael trips them and Casey Jones arrives. Stop them! What the hell was that? I don't know. It was a crime, you purse-grabbing pukes. And this is the penalty. Two minutes for flashing, two minutes for hooking, and let's not forget my personal favorite. Two minutes for high sticking. How about a five minute game misconduct for roughing, pal? Hey, Bogey, who died and made you referee? You did your job, get out of here and let me do mine. These JV lowlifes need to be taught a lesson. <laughs> Not like that they don't. Not from you. Looks like you're the one who needs a lesson, pal. Class is pain 101. Your instructor is Casey Jones. Look, I don't want to fight you. Well, tough rocks, pal. A Jose Canseco bat? Tell me you didn't pay money for this. <laughs> That's it. It was a two-for-one sale, pal. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? I hate punkers. Especially bald ones with, with green makeup who, who wear masks over ugly faces, huh? That's it. New batter! All right, strike one, Whiffer! Home run! Raphael wins, one nothing. Well? New game, Roundhead. Cricket. Cricket? Nobody understands cricket. You gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. I'll teach you. See? That's six runs. Uh, oh. That's so long, freak. I got work to do. Freak! Freak! 1931, Chief turns off his day. April presses the Chief harder. Oh, Neil! Get in here! Time me. Just what is it you hope to accomplish out there besides busting my chops? I think you know as much as I do about this Foot Clan, and I don't think you're doing anything about it. And you expect me to waste precious manpower over a few immigrants who are reminded of something that supposedly happened years ago in Japan? Have you got something else? Are you trying to tell me how to do my job? Interior den night. The turtles bring April back to the den. Are you crazy? Yeah, Leo. I'm crazy, okay? A loony, okay? Why? Why? Oh, I don't know, because I wanted to redecorate. You know, a couple throw pillows, a TV news reporter. What do you think? Raphael, what are you doing? He got jumped in the subway. I had to bring her here. It's the news lady. Can we keep her? Bring water, cold washed off, pillow. Ooh, fire out. Hi. Oh my God. I'm dead. I'm dead, aren't I? It's okay. No, no, I'm dreaming. I, I'm, I must be dreaming now. Those guys in the black pajamas, they jumped me. And that rat, I saw you in the parking lot, and, th and that explains you. you. Please, just sit and you down guys, and calm yourself. I will tell you where we came from. It talks. It is really quite simple, Miss O'Neill. And he knows my name. Perfect. 15 years ago. Why don't I ever dream of Harrison Ford? For 15 years now, we have lived here. Before that time, I was a pet of my master Yoshi, mimicking his movements from my cage and learning the secret art of ninja. 
When we were forced to come to New York, I found myself for the first time without a home, wandering the sewers, scavenging for whatever I could find. And then one day I came upon a shattered glass jar and four baby turtles. That was us. Shut up. Shh. The little ones were crawling into a strange glowing ooze from a broken canister nearby. I gathered them up in an old coffee can. And when I awoke the next morning, I received a shock, for they had doubled in size. I too was growing, particularly in intellect. And I was amazed at how intelligent they seemed. But nothing could have prepared me for, for what happened next. One of them spoke. Pizza! Pizza! More words followed, and I began training them, teaching them all I had learned from my master. Radical! 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 And soon, I gave them all names. Leonardo. Michelangelo. It's me. Donatello and Raphael. I'm not dreaming, am I? No, I'm afraid not. You guys, so you <laughs> feel like you're picking up right where you left off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a lot more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember how the crickets got into the sewer when we were shooting oh god yes oh yeah and the stink steve what did you do when the crickets showed up did that did, was that just like a final straw or just one of many straws that you had to deal with yeah yeah one of many i mean the crickets were chirping away all over the soundtrack I, I had to go and um, do uh, ADR, which for people who don't know what ADR is, automated dialogue recording, and loop the whole movie. And I, most of it, I would say 80% of the movie was uh, looped. And, uh, and I never quite understood why. And then I was like, oh, I think it was the crickets. That's pretty funny. I remember when we were um, shooting on second unit and we were doing the flashbacks of the baby turtle puppets which was against black so they were brightly lit puppets against black velvet and then we got ready to shoot and about 10,000 houseflies showed up <laughs> and just started hovering around the brightly lit puppet in the pitch black stage and we couldn't get rid of them there was nothing we couldn't get rid of them and the only thing we could think to do is we sent the runners out to buy all of the fly swatters they could get. And they came and come straight back. So the entire crew, and we got runners, we got some creature shop people in as well. We were all, we, we set up these white uh, foam sheets and pointed light at them to attract the flies. And then all of us just started killing flies with fly swatters. <laughs> and, that's when Tom, and that's when Tom Gray came to check out second unit. <laughs> There's like 35 of us with fly swatters. That's all. <laughs> actually, we didn't learn, we didn't actually learn what we were doing until two years later when we were doing dinosaurs in LA. We were using radio frequencies that are cleared in London for radio controlled airplanes. And that's what we were always using for our animatronics. And, but when we went to America, those aren't the same frequencies. And when we were trying to do dinosaurs, a truck full of military police showed up at our studio and came in basically to arrest us because we were broadcasting on the Air Force telemetry frequencies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we were doing on Ninja Turtles too, but the MPs never showed up. <laughs> I used to call it MTB, which was Major Turtle Breakdown. <laughs> and, and so I was oftentimes, it was so much fun for me when I would actually have a turtle in the scene with me. And because we had all these challenges, there wasn't. So many times there was a C-stand with a paper plate um, clipped to it with a smiley face. Yes. And they were set up. So I had my eye lines for the turtles. Oh, it was great days to be able to go to Steve and say to him, 
Steve, the, all the turtles are not working. <laughs> yeah. And he would look at me like, I mean, he was going to take me outside. <laughs> and I, I, and then they started saying, well, let's just shoot the rat. Because he was hardwired. So they were just, let's just shoot the rat. Then. Let's shoot the rat. <laughs> yeah, the go-to the go rat as well. And, and we got some gold from that. That's for sure. Well, yeah. and Steve, I have to say that with the amount of pressure that you have to de that you had to deal with, I never saw you melt down. I never, you were always just amazing. You might turn really red as you were just trying to breathe, but you were amazing. You oh, you hit that stuff pretty pretty darn well. I have to say, hats yeah, off. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, back on it then. Scene fifty five, interior April's apartment day. The Teslas are back at April's without Raphael when Charles Pennington shows up. It's me, Charles. Oh, it's my boss. Can you guys? Hi, Charles. What's up? Hey, April. Listen, you you have been working awful hard this story lately why don't you take it easy for a while just let somebody else handle it just for a little while you know what are you talking about it's my story no way look at you you're exhausted i've just had a rough night let somebody else help you cover city hall charles that's ridiculous what's with you today nothing's with me today i just thought you might like a little help that's all well i don't Hand me a towel, will you? Who do you keep the towels? No! What's wrong? I, I just, I, I don't want you to see my unsightly bathtub ring. Just out, 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 out. I have to get ready for work. Sixty-six, warehouse, Greta's night. Tatsu and Shredder address the foot and teens. Money cannot buy the honor which you have earned tonight. You make us all proud. Only effort, discipline, loyalty earn the right to wear the dragon door. You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. I am your father. I want you all to become full members of the foot. There is a new enemy. Freaks of nature who interfere with our business. You are my eyes and ears. Find them. Together, we will punish these creatures, these turtles. <laughs> no doubt. Master, 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 I, I, uh, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. To warehouse, cage area, night, chained up, splinter, speaks with Danny. How oh, can a face so young wear so many burdens? Oh, you can talk. Yes, and I can also listen. Some say that the path from inner turmoil begins with a friendly ear. My ear is open if you care to use it. No, I, I don't think so. What is your name? Danny. And have you no one to go to, Danny? No parents? My dad couldn't care less about me. I doubt that is true. Why? All fathers care for their sons. I see a Kevin Clash, Brian Henson spinoff. <laughs> That's true. Oh my God, you're, you're, you're going to make us cry. We'll take it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we keep going? Leonardo alone in the woods, he hears Splinter. Leonardo, 
Splinter! He's alive! Thanks, Baz. Splinter's alive! Uh, we know, Leo. Of course he is. We all think he's alive. I don't think. I know. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, well, you know. That's Exterior you. Woods, 125 Night. The turtles are around a fire and Splinter appears. <laughs> Leo, if you drag this out here for nothing... Don't worry, I, I can't prepare. Put those away. Now, everybody close your eyes and concentrate. Concentrate hard. I am proud of you, my sons. Tonight, you have learned the final and greatest truth of the ninja, that Ultimate mastery comes not of the body, but of the mind. Together, there is nothing your four minds cannot accomplish. Help each other, draw upon another, and always remember the true force that binds you. The same as that which brought me here tonight, that which I gladly return with my final words. I love you all, <laughs> my sons. Does anybody have an idea about who or what this is? I don't know, but I'll bet he never has to look for a can opener. You fight well, in the old style, but you have caused me enough trouble. Now you face the Shredder. The Shredder. Um, maybe all the hardware's for making coleslaw. I got him. This guy's good. Why don't you go next? Thank you. Yeah! Match it for it. One, two, three. Mm. Ah, damn. Great. What? At exactly what point did we lose control here? You know, maybe someone ought to tell him that we're the good guys. Any thoughts? I've only got one thought. This guy knows where Splinter is. Yes, Orokusaki. I know who you are. We met many years ago in the home of my master, the Matoyoshi. You. It's him. Now I will finish what I began with your ear! Death comes for us all, Urokusaki. But something much worse comes for you. For when you die, it will be without honor. Wow, you guys, this was incredible. I, I ah, thank you so much for saying yes to me and for showing up today. Um, this has been, um, hey, oh my gosh, we bring him. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Elias. Elias is in the house. How you guys doing? Oh my God, come on. Nice. What's up? Look at you, man. Hey, look at you, man. Look at It's so good to see you. How are you? It's great to see you, man. Look at you guys. You look exactly like I remember you guys. That's awesome. I miss you. I can't wait till I am back in LA and I get to hang with you. Good time. This is my office. I keep, I and you're coming to my house. Look at how beautiful you are. Look at you. Yeah. Look, at you. Yeah. Look how handsome you are. <laughs> I have to say, we have a group of people who have aged beautifully. And uh, we no, so bro. missed you today. So I'm so glad you were able to like get here at least for a minute. I know that the fans are going to go crazy. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Has, it been really, has it really been 30 years? 30 years. Yeah. 31. 31 years. We shot in summer of 89. 
Yeah. yeah. Wow. I should have swiped so much off of that set. <laughs> well, you <laughs> know what? I, mean, I, 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 call, I consider myself a custodian of this thing. So I, I don't actually own it. I'm just kind of like keeping it safe. Looking at Are pictures you of it in there. And, and, and we're, <laughs> we're lucky, you know what I mean? We could pay our mortgage, we could pay our rent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so we're very lucky. We're very blessed we're very that lucky. we're, you know, think yeah. about all these poor folk who are just struggling right now. It's rough. It just breaks my heart, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's great that you did this, you know, that you brought, brought us all together to have some fun and have a laugh yeah. and share a story, you know what I mean? It's great. I love you, my friend. And, you know, the fact that you were able to, to join us um, it just means the world to me. It really, really does. And it's been so fun um, for us. Oh. Now we have a, we have a date. We're, we're going out in your car. We're going to go hang. And we're gonna you look hang. great. You look great. You sound great. You look beautiful. It's, it, I feel like, uh -huh. I feel like I, you know what I mean? I, I feel like I just saw you. I feel yeah. like we just saw where we last left off. You know what I mean? That's a yeah. good sign. That is a sign of friendship. Wow. Gosh, you guys, thank you so much for saying yes and showing up today. And to our fans, thank you so much for sticking with us for these last 30 years. It's just incredible. And please don't think that this is where the story ends. We've still got more up ahead for you. We've got more turtle collaborators to talk to. And we've got lots more set for this channel. So you know where to come back to. And uh, I don't know. I think it's time to call in Mr. Usher. Will you drop your beat? Warner Brothers is partnering with Fathom Events to bring Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back to movie theaters this fall in celebration of its 30th anniversary. Get the details at FathomEvents.com and we'll see you on the big screen.